I once watched a movie, I think it's called The Aviator, and in that movie there's one lesson that I picked. It was interesting to see the main character moving from one accomplishment to another. And especially when an accomplishment has come and they're celebrating the next move, even when they're still in the gala celebrating, he's thinking about the next big thing, how he's going to make the next big thing work. And he's trying already to convince people on the merits of that big thing. What I'm talking about in this series is now that you have a vision, now that you've crystallized your vision, you've clarified what it is, what next? What do you do to make it a reality? There is the theory part, which we all start from there. And then there's the practical part of the vision. How do you make this vision a reality? That is where the rubber meets the road. And I want us to discuss one more thing today. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So for the record, I normally talk to individuals on matters related to purpose and especially on matters related to vision. So this podcast here is geared towards individuals, not necessarily companies. And I've said in the previous episodes that it is easy for you to craft a vision. It is actually the easiest thing ever. The thing is that it's not a mainstay in our culture, especially in the way we have been raised up. So it seems as if it's the most difficult thing to do. The most difficult thing to do is to come up with your own personal vision. And you ask people on the streets, what's your vision? And they look at you like a cow and you get, they have absolutely no clue what it is. But then you take someone through just a few steps, maybe one sitting and they see what their vision is and their eyes are open and they pop open and they become so excited about it. But then the same people five years down the line, six years down the line, it is easy for them to tell you this vision business doesn't work. The question is, why? Why is it that it doesn't work? And you and I know, and I've I've said this, that of the ingredients of success, whether it's individual, whether it's an organization, a country, a multi-billion dollar, multinational organization, whatever it is, There will be no success, even in the spiritual arena. There will be no success where there is no vision. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. They cast off restraint. In other words, vision is paramount to success. But the question is, those guys who are having visions, why is it that their visions are not making them successful? Why is it that, you know, it's not happening for them? You might ask that question from many different angles, by the way. There's a guy in the Bible called Joseph who had a vision. And his vision was that he was taking care of his family. I mean, he was the head. Yet the guy was the last born. And then, long before that long, he finds himself being ostracized by his, his brothers, being thrown in a pit and being sold into slavery, and in slavery being mistreated, being sent into prison. And at that moment in time, he can be asking, what happened to the vision? I have said in the previous episodes that there are different characteristics of vision and one of the characteristics is this, it is not an immediate thing, it's going to delay. That is the biggest characteristic of a vision, it's going to delay. But this delay is not necessarily something that is brought about by you only, it is also brought about by external forces that you don't have control over. But then I'm talking about what you do have control over. 
There are some things that you do have control over that make that vision not to come to fruition. And we discussed some of them. I mean, we're discussing some of them. And yesterday we saw one critical one is this. That if you're not going to convert that vision into manageable pieces and do some activities routinely on a daily basis, forget that vision. Kiss it goodbye. It's, it's going to be forgotten. It's not going to come to fruition. Vision doesn't work itself. It doesn't work itself. It doesn't grow itself. It doesn't mature itself. It doesn't seek itself for connections. It doesn't look for connections for by itself. It doesn't look for people by itself. It doesn't look for resources by itself. Vision is like a baby. It needs to be nurtured. It needs to be taken with, you know, a lot of care and tenderness and a lot of patience. Lots of patience. So my point is this, that you do this by being dedicated, being focused. We read for you a quote yesterday. Being dedicated, being focused and being disciplined on a daily basis, creating a daily routine so that that daily routine is going to deliver the vision one ounce of victory at a time. That's what I've realized about vision fruition. It is not big bang. It is one ounce of effort. One ounce of victory, one level, one glory to the next glory. That is how vision is being fulfilled. So if you're sitting back at home waiting for the spectacular to happen, guess what you're doing? You're killing the vision. You're doing absolutely nothing towards that vision. And one day when your vision is not being full, I mean activated, one day is eternity. In the last span of a vision, one day is critical. One day can turn things around and one day can turn things around either negatively or positively for that vision depending on what you're doing so every single day must be documented tracked in terms of what did i do that directly or remotely connects to the fulfillment of my vision if you did nothing that particular day guess what the vision is being malnourished there is actually such a thing of a vision being malnourished. And by the way, the greatest malnourishment you ever saw on the face of the earth today, it is a mal- malnourishment of vision. Like I said, it's not easy, it's not difficult to get a vision. It's easy. The difficult part is staying with it and bring it to fruition. So number one, if you are going to bring this thing to fruition, make sure there is a daily routine. Roll up your sleeves, go to work on the vision. Later on, the vision might start working on you. The number two thing that you're supposed to do, the second thing, this, this is very important, and I'm going to read that quote that I had for you yesterday. I'm going to read it again. But before I can do that, let me give you this point. The point is simply this, that you must create non-negotiables. There has got to be some compelling being done. There's got to be some restrictions being done. There's got to be some non-negotiables being done. When you're being recruited into the Navy SEALs, there are some non-negotiables that are written down and no matter whether you're the president's son or you come from whatever place, if those non-negotiables are not done, you are not going to make the cut. Period. The same thing about vision. Vision is a master and it compels you. I kid you not. I'm not calling you a slave, but I'm saying that vision is a master and it dictates some things and it will have you to have some non-negotiables. If you are a soldier, you'll not be caught up with civilians carousing and doing things that civilians do. You walk circumspect. If you're a leader, you know, because doing some things that leaders don't do, you walk circumspect. You're being compelled by the vision. And let not just the vision compel you. Sit down yourself and be compelled. Write down your own non-negotiables. Let me tell you this. Without constricting yourself, without writing down your non-negotiables, without writing things that you will never be caught dead doing because you have a vision, that vision is in jeopardy. That vision is in danger of being curtailed, being distracted, being derailed, being slowed down, 
being watered down and apathy coming in and the vision being forgotten altogether. That's why you've got to have some non-negotiables. You see a highly spiritual leader, they have non-negotiables. They have got to meditate for hours on end. They have got to pray for hours on end. They have got to cleanse their spiritual system, whatever, however that is done. They have got to read scriptures for hours on end. I mean, they've got to stay in conversations that build their spirit for hours on end. You don't see them wallowing in negativity and gossip and, and those things. It's not that they can't do those things. They can, but they have non-negotiables. Once you have a vision, you need to craft non-negotiables. Let me read for you that quote again by Emery Fosdick, Harry Emerson Fosdick. He said this. He said that, No horse gets anywhere until he is harnessed. No steam or gas drives anything until it is confined. No Niagara is ever turned into light and power until it is tunneled. But no life ever grows great until it is focused, dedicated, and disciplined. That is the art of creating non-negotiables. That's it. You create non-negotiables by harnessing by confining by tunneling by focusing dedicating and disciplining and you do this by creating non-negotiable so whatever your vision is i don't know what your vision is i can guarantee you that it has it must be beefed up and pillared up if there is such a word with some relevant non-negotiables you need to sit down and say these are the do's come rain or come shine these are the don'ts whether my father is the president or not because the vision supersedes every single deal the vision is the reason as to why you are here on earth and you cannot be derailed by anything. There's a man called Jesus Christ who called his friend a devil because this man was trying to curtail his non-negotiable. His non-negotiable was that I must go to Jerusalem. And he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And this guy called Peter comes and tells him, you cannot do that. They're going to kill you. And Jesus says, get behind me. Devil, get behind me, Satan. I'm saying that the vision is higher than anything you'll ever see on the face of the earth. The vision supersedes very many things. Actually, the vision could be the very reason as to why God sent you here on earth. That's why. That's why it must have non-negotiables. For me, spiritual growth, mental growth, and writing are an absolute must each day. Not that there are days I don't do these things. There are some days that I don't do this. And when I don't do this, I know exactly what it means. I was telling my wife the other day that I feel disconnected. And every time, and she told me, every time you're disconnected, you're grumpy, you're rude, you're all those things. That's how vision is killed. And there's no way I'm going to feel my vision when I'm grumpy and I'm rude and and all all those things. I need the non-negotiables to be up there. My mental acuity. My spiritual growth, my my writing, my preparation, those are non-negotiables. Those are things that pillar up the vision. Those are things that support it. They are bulwarks for the vision. Another non-negotiable for me is staying organized and having each day of my working minutes clearly documented on how it's going to be spent and actually tracked. And when I don't do this, guess what? It's easy to drift. Drifting is as a result of having non-negotiables. That's exactly what the Bible says, that when people do not have a vision, they cast off restraint. See, this quote we've just given you, it's about restraint, and this restraint comes because of a vision. Fosdick said that no horse gets anywhere until it is his harnessed. No gas gives a vehicle power or light until it is confined. No Niagara ever gives light and power to the world until it is tunneled. And no life ever grows until it is focused, it is dedicated, and it is disciplined. Without the non-negotiables, you drift. Why should you be circumspect when you do not have anything that's, you know, 
is making you circumspect. You, you don't have a vision. There's no point of being circumspect. So the second thing that you've got to do for that vision to come to fruition is to make sure that it is confined. And you confine yourself by creating non-negotiables. Track it. Just make sure that you have four or five things that are written down. This one's a must do. If I don't, it's affecting my vision. This one I must not do. If I ever find myself doing these things that I'm not supposed to do, I just know that I am eating away on the life. By the way, the vision is alive, by the way. I'm eating away on the life of my vision. And you need to wake up from that. So number two today, there is no fruition of your vision unless you have none negotiables. Tomorrow we'll discuss something else. But until then, find your non-negotiables. Bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.